and welcome to the South Indian Bank Q4 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Incred Equities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sri Shankar R from Incred Equities. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we have great pleasure in hosting uh, the fourth quarter uh, earnings call of South Indian Bank. In line with what guidance that South Indian Bank has been giving and uh, from what we have seen over the last so many quarters, the company has come out with an excellent result. And congratulations to the management for that. We have a representing South Indian Bank, Mr. Selling, the Gantra, the chairman. Mr. Burli Ramakrishnan, the Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Thomas Joseph, EVP and Chief Business Officer, Mr. Anto George, EGM and HR and Operation, Mr. Sanjay Sina, SGM and Country Head, and Mr. Chitra, Senior General Manager and CFO, along with other senior executives participating in this call. Without much ado, I hand over this call to Mr. Murli Ramakrishnan. The Managing Director and CEO of South Africa. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, to everyone. Um, South Indian Bank Limited Q4 FI, FI23 earnings conference call. We are joined by my colleagues, uh, Mr. Thomas Joseph, Mr. Anto Judge, Mr. Sanjay Sina, Ms. Chitra, Ms. Mr. Soni, uh, Ms. Biji, and Mr. Santil Kumar. And also we have our C, uh, Chief Credit Officer Minu also on the call and our Treasury Head Vinod and our Head of Policy and Monitoring Nehru Singh. All of them are uh, uh, the, forming the senior uh, management team of the bank. During this financial, the performance of the bank was an all-round one with key ratios and numbers showing a significant improvement from the past few years. This overall improvement in the performance was brought by managing both asset and liability portfolio with equal importance. While quality and profitability is focused on asset side, pricing of liability portfolio was also done in an appropriate manner. Both hardening of interest rates and tight liquidity in the market had impacted the sector. However, in our case, cost of deposit has been more or less stable with a very small hike in fourth quarter. Increase in the yield on investment portfolio also helped in an AI increase. Let me start with the key highlights of performance. For the year ended March 23, bank achieved its best ever performance in the following areas. Highest ever business of one, Lakh 63,743 crores uh, in the history of the bank. Highest ever net profit of rupees 775 crores in the history of the bank. Highest ever net interest income of rupees 3,012 crores in the history of the bank. Highest ever CRAR of 17.25% and tier 1 ratio of 14.74% asset March 31st, 2023. Highest ever ECR, including write off of 76.78%. Highest name of 3.3% in the last 17 years, highest written on assets of 0.72 in the last 9 years and highest return of equity of 11.61 in the last 9 years. Let me now take you through the financial performance of the bank for this year. Net profit for the year stood at 775 crores as against a profit of 45 crores during the last financial year. Operating profit for the year increased by 21% from 1,248 crores in FI22 to 1,507 crores in FI23. Casa amount increased year on year from Rs. 29,601 crores to Rs. 30,227 crores as of March 23. Casa ratio stands at 32.98% as against 33.21% year on year. There is a marginal dip in Casa from 33.21 to 32.98%. Cumulative NIM for the year improved to 3.3 against 2.62 on a year on year basis. PCR, including write off, improved by 723 bits year on year to reach 76.78 in FI23, again 69.55 during FI22. PCR, excluding write off, improved by 1385 bits year on year to reach 65.12 in FI23, against 51.27 during FI22. I wish to reiterate that PCR excluding write off improved by 1385 bits year on year to reach 65.12 in FI22 and 
in FI23 against 51.27 during FI22. Overall gross NPA reduced from 5.9% to 5.14% on year on year basis. Net NPA reduced from 2.97% to 1.86% on year on year basis. I am happy to share that net NPA has come down below 2% and it is registered at 1.86% for the year end. Significant improvement in ROA at 0.72% for FI23 as against 0.04% during FI22 and ROE at 11.61% against 0.77%. Recovery and upgradation in NPA accounts increased from Rs. 1,464 crores in FI22 2,814 crores in FI23. Continuing our focus on collections, our SMA2 portfolio has come down by 37% on year-on-year -year basis from Rs. 892 crores to 559 crores. Built a new book of 41,566 crores from October 20 with better end rating reflecting GNPA close to 0.09% and SMA2 book at 0.12%. I again wish to read this uh, because this is one of the hallmark of uh, how we have built our bank. I uh, built a new book of Rs. 41,566 crores from October 2020 with better underwriting reflecting in GNPA close to 0.09% and SMA2 book at 0.12%. With regard to status of sale of assets to ARCs, we carry a balance SR of 1,413 crores and provision of 1,247 crores. With this, the net SR value outstanding is only rupees 165.98 crores. And for the this year, for the full year, based on aging provision, we have only 15 crores which is getting matured this year. Let me now take you to the performance of the bank for the quarter. Total deposits to that 91,651 crores. Gross advances to that rupees 17,092 crores. Casas to that 30,227 crores. Bank declared a net profit of 334 crores as against a profit of 272 crores during the corresponding period of the previous year. Operating profit for the fourth quarter increased by 95% from Rs. 288 in FI22 to 562 in FI23. NIM for the quarter improved to 3.67% against 2.8% on a quarter on quarter basis. This is uh, again uh, something which I wanted to emphasize. NIM for the quarter improved to 3.67% against 2.8% on quarter on quarter basis. Recovery and upgradation NP accounts increased from Rs. 451 crores in Q4 FI22 to 725 crores in Q4 FI23. Significant improvement in ROE at 1.26% as against 0.4% and ROE at 20.29% again 6.56% on Q&C basis. This is again a significant uh, improvement which I want to register. ROA and ROE which are significant uh, profitability parameters. I am very happy to share that our ROA for this quarter has, uh, is at 1.26%. This was 0.4% last year for the same quarter. And ROE at 29% for this quarter. Again 6.5%. Sorry? Okay. ROE at 20.29% again 6.56% on Q on Q basis. Let me now take you through other operation and the total business of the bank increased by 8% and stands at 1,63,700. Backed by total disbursements of Rs. 54,801 crore during the financial year ended March 23. The details of disbursements are as follows. Corporate 31,344 crores, predominantly A and above rated corporates. Gold Rs. 11,378 crores. Business segment Rs. 7,386 crores. Other retail 4,693 crores, which includes housing loan of 875 crores, PL of 1,377 crores and other retails of 2,441 crores. The share of A and above rated large corporates has improved from 89% as at March 31, 2022 to 96% as at March 31, 2023. We have new slippages and SMA2 in our new corporate book. We continue to grow our gold loan business. Our disbursement year on year was at 11,378 crores with an average LTV of 78.03% and a ticket size of about 1.55 lakhs. Gold loan grew by 28% year-on-year to reach 13,808 crores. 
personal mode is another segment where we see good traction since the launch of pre approved peer in december 21 as on march 23 our peer book had crossed 1820 crores credit card is another growth area which we launched during fi 22 as at march 23 we had issued 25723 credit cards with monthly average spend of rupees 23418 the total book as of march 23 stood at 796 crores as far as sme is concerned we are seeing good uptick in disbursements month on month over the past few quarters we are cautiously growing the segment with average monthly disbursement of more than rupees 615 crores for the financial year ended march 23 as against an average of 250 crores for the corresponding period last year coming to liability portfolio our core deposits grew by 5% year on year to rupees 89614 crores bulk deposits declined by 47% year on year to rupees 2037 crores in line with our strategy nra deposits continue to be our strength and now stands at 28159 crores it contributes 31% of our total deposits low cost nra deposits stands at 9150 crores the bank saw robust growth of 16% year on year in our nra remittances business Our investment book was at 26,014 crores, split into HCM of 19,688 crores and AFS and HFT of rupees 6,326 crores. Last year Q4, the end duration of the investment book was at 2.91, which we cautiously reduced to 2.48 as of March 23. The fresh fee pages stood at 343 crores for Q4, FI 23, which was within the overall guidance. The overall restructured book stands at 1516 crores as of 31st march as against 2417 crores during march 22 of which business segment is 786 crores personal segment is 279 crores corporate is 398 crores agri is 53 crores this is the break up of this restructured book which are holding which is 1516 crores as of march in 2023 The bank holds standard asset provision, including standard restructured and FITL of 534 crores. As per our guidance, we are able to bring down the GNPA closer to 5% and net NPA below 2% FI23. Net interest income for the quarter increased by 43% year on year to 857 crores. Our core fee income increased by 10% year on year to 158 crores. Treasury profit for the quarter was at 30 crores, excluding the provisional investments. Overall, provisions decreased by 50% year on year. to 39 crores in f24 fi23 the restriction in provisions was mainly due to sorry the reduction in provisions was mainly due to lower slippages and better recoveries we are hopeful that the momentum in disbursement and collections will continue in the coming quarters such as the desired targets so with this we open the floor for questions thank you thank you we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes from the line of Nilesh Jetani from BOI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, good afternoon, gentlemen, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and congrats for the great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question was on the yield and the NIM side. Uh, so I wanted to understand from the near term as well as from a uh, medium to long term basis. Uh, when I see our book, uh, corporate portion is increasing. Uh, despite that we are able to uh, achieve higher nims as well as yields also uh, in the corporate side also typically triple a and double a are gaining share so what is driving this incremental nims wanted to understand that and from a long term basis as you had a uh, faulted earlier in your con calls that you are not a person who would basically follow a x percentage from corporate or x percentage from a retail so going forward how to see this nims spanning out if corporate share increases by a larger extent going forward i am hearing lot of cross talk i don't know whether it is uh, uh, uh shri shankar can you take care of that i think i have not uh, there is some cross talk happening uh 
Excuse me, Sri Shankar, uh, sir. Sri Shankar, are you there? Yes, sir. I am there. You could go ahead. Uh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, uh, to answer the question, uh, basically, yes, you are right that typically large, rate, uh, well rated corporates uh, uh, demand uh, very fine pricing. Uh, there is no taking away of that. So, therefore, if you look at uh, the composition of the book, we, of course, have uh, well, uh, I mean, we, our disbursements have uh, come from all segments. I mean, if you look at, uh, I read out the uh, breakup of the uh, disbursement which we have done. So, it's uh, across all products we have done a good disbursement. Obviously, in the book growth, probably you may not be seeing growth in SME, primarily due to the rundowns, uh, which are also in excess of the disbursements we do, and also to the due to the fact that we do some forced exits. The, the accounts which we don't want to keep it in our book. Uh, but with regard to NIM, it's a combination of uh, uh, the products which we are currently uh, growing. So if you look at uh, the products which are which are growing, gold is growing well for us, PL is growing well for us, credit card is growing well for us, SME, we have done the highest 107% of our targeted disbursements. And we have also in corporate, we have, uh, though we have onboarded uh, well-rated corporates, there is a continuous effort from the team to improve the NIM which we get out of the corporate segment. As I have discussed in the past, the, uh, uh, the reason behind uh, chasing good corporates is to ensure that we not only get credit income for the transactions which we do, but through the relationship we do get lots of other uh, related businesses like vendor financing, dealer financing, retail uh, funding to the corporate employees, etc. So overall, we when we look at a corporate exposure, we look at not just the credit income, but we look at the ROE coming from the entire corporate relationship. So, and since these corporates are well-rated corporates, the, obviously it helps us in very less capital provisioning allocated to this, and therefore ROE for this book is pretty good. That is on one side. On the other side, if you look at uh, since our retail book is growing, where particularly Unsecure, which is still today 3% uh, of my book, I have good runway to grow the book. Therefore, to give you guidance on NIM, our incremental NIM for the Q4 was 3.67%, whereas the bank NIM as of March end was 3.3%, uh, as against my guidance of 3.2%. Next year, our target is to reach 3.5% for the bank, and which I'm sure we'll be able to uh, uh, reasonably manage, given the fact that our incremental NIM is well above 3.5% now. But we expect that some uh, amount of repricing will happen in the liability side, Though we have done a little bit of repricing in Q4, which we started doing in Q3, and we have done a little more in Q4. So we are very tightly managing our uh, uh, asset, uh, ALCO, uh, I mean, asset and liability match, and uh, ensuring that we don't uh, overprice our liabilities. At the same time, we are not losing any of our customers. And on the other side, asset side, we are continuously engaging to pass on the increase in cost. As you must have seen, there's almost 200% increase in the repo rate over the last 12 months. And a constant effort has been put in by every business team to pass on this increase in interest rates across uh, the various customers. So with this combination of managing our tight um, uh, asset and liability and ensuring that the pricing is reasonably done across all segments and with the anticipated growth which we are hoping to do of 10 to 12 to 13 percent growth in asset uh, i'm sure that with the focus on quality continuing we'll be able to uh, meet up with the requirement on NIM. that's the anything else i have left out please ask again so follow up on this as you said the repricing of liability has started uh, so wanted to understand on the asset side as well as liability side uh, what portion is repriced to the newer rates and what percentage is yet to be repriced? Any color on that? Yeah, yeah, I'll just, just hold on for a second and just check. Yeah, see, uh, I'll give you a couple of uh, data points, I think, which, which hopefully helps you to uh, make out what we are doing. So our weighted average residual maturity of the fixed deposit as of March end is 1.24 years, and weighted average original maturity was 2.17 years. So we are uh, obviously continuously repricing the deposits which are coming for maturity, and we are also very, very clear that we don't want to uh, across the board increase in uh, deposit rates. We are looking at where it makes uh, sense for us to increase uh, deposit rates. And weighted average cost of term deposits outstanding as of 31st March is 6.24%. 
and what percentage would be repriced to this number? Say 1.2 years is weighted average duration. Right. So maybe we are already since September, or maybe the rates have started a steep increase. So probably six months down the line. So 60, 70 percent is repriced to newer rates. Is the understanding right? Uh, yeah, you can't really put it as the 60, 70 percent because we have started actually repricing from, probably from. Uh, uh, November onwards, November, December onwards. So I can probably in the investor presentation we have shown how our deposit uh, uh, rates have moved up. Uh, maybe you can refer to that. But just to quickly touch upon that, I'll tell you. Um, Our, uh, see, we have been continuously degrowing our bulk deposits, which used to be at about 10,874 crores, which came down, I mean, in 1920, that, that stands at 2037 crores as of 2023. And as far as uh, uh, the deposit rate is concerned, just, just hold on for a second, let me take that out. Yeah, our cost of deposit as of Q4 of FI 22 was 4.54 last year. Quarter and last year, fourth quarter. This year, first quarter it was 4.35, second quarter it was 4.23, third quarter it was 4.27, and fourth quarter it was is 4.55. So, if you look at the delta between Q3 to Q2, delta is four basis points, and between Q4 to Q3, the delta is 20, uh, 28 uh, basis points. So, you can see that the overall increase is happening probably from the month of, as you said, from the month of uh, October, November. So probably we can say that 50% of our, uh, roughly, 50%, uh, 64%, uh, I, I, I just got the data, 64% of our deposit has been repriced. Got it, sir. And one last question from my side on the cost to income. So if I see the quarterly trends, the cost to income has been very volatile. So wanted to understand from a steady state basis, what are we aspiring to as far as the cost are concerned going forward in absolute terms? And where do you see this cost to income stabilizing probably from a one year down the line? See, if, uh, uh, frankly, cost to income, you must have seen the volatility only because of the extraordinary 312 crores of provisioning which we had to do because of SRS in Q3. Otherwise, it's been a steady trend. Uh, see, we are currently at about 60%. Cost to income ratio for us is about 60%. Uh, it's a continuous uh, effort. I think this probably will start improving once... Uh, we, our treasury also starts contributing a lot more than what it is doing today. And with the fact that overall uh, uh, NIM is also going to go up and uh, provisioning hopefully will continue to stay the way it is, then you will probably see this coming down. Aspirationally, we would want to be uh, reaching 55 uh, because currently we are at 60. Probably would want to reach 55 uh, at least by uh, December quarter. And then we will aim to reach below 50 by next June quarter or so, around that time. Yeah, that's great, sir. Uh, thank you so much for replying for my questions. And uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Our next question comes from the line of Prashant Kumar with Sunidhi Securities and Finance Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is on uh, provisioning side. Uh, the banks are very uh, low provision coverage if uh, right off like 30 percent or even uh, lower level and from there a phenomenal uh, improvement has been done to around uh, 65 percent right now so i just wanted to know uh, about buffer provisioning which is not uh, calculated in pci uh, like floating provision standard asset provision or uh, uh, provision against uh, standard DF sector asset if it is readily available uh, sorry, your voice is not very too very clear. But uh, your question is on uh, PCR excluded right of this input from uh, to 65 percent. So your question is on how much uh, provision are we holding on standard assets, etc. Is that the question? Sir, on on uh, I just wanted to know on uh, buffer provisioning, uh, which is not included in like uh, yeah uh, on uh, like provision on the standard asset range uh, yeah uh, or uh, provi uh, uh, provision on standard asset or floating provision okay now we are actually we are uh, uh, see frankly we are in the process of improving our pcr we, uh, as i said uh, we wanted to reach a milestone of 70% excluding write off uh, uh, provisioning coverage issue therefore to some extent we have been 
uh, providing uh, in order to improve our overall ratio. So this time also we have provided extra 25 crores to improve our PCR to 65%. The plan is to take it to 70% uh, in the coming year and hopefully we, we, we want to aspirationally reach 70% plus by the end of this year. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to restrict to two questions per participant. Our next question comes from the line of Umang Shah from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congratulations on a very good quarter. Um, sir, I've got three questions. One is, um, um, I just wanted to understand what makes us so confident to improve our margins uh, next year. Now, I understand mathematically, given that our incremental spreads and margins are higher compared to our on-book spreads or margins, but uh, I believe next year, uh, the ask for liability growth will also inch up, right, given the fact that our LDRs have significantly expanded in FY23 which means that uh, we will have to start focusing on deposit growth uh, uh, in, in, a, in a, a much focused way. So how should we look at this, uh, uh, look at this whole equation about uh, expanding margins and, and uh, probably looking at deposit growth, which will be similar to our loan growth guidance of about 10-12%. Yeah, uh, let me first start by saying that we are, uh, the way we manage liquidity, the, manage, the way we manage liability is basically based on two uh, guidance ratios. One is uh, our um, CD ratio, the other one is uh, LCR. And we also want to be sure that we have enough liquidity to uh, meet up with our growth requirement. As I am telling you, our uh, growth, uh, advances growth which we are, uh, we are planning to do for the coming year is around 12% uh, kind of growth, 12 to 13% kind of growth. And we also, uh, you must have seen the proportion of our corporate book also carries to some extent a proportion of our short term loan, which is about uh, currently on an average it's about 12 to 15%. So this is something which keep coming back because these are all done at uh, 90 days and 30 days and 60 days kind of thing for a well rated corporate. And we are continuously riding on to the uh, 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 increase in interest rates by uh, whenever it comes for renewal again. So that is something which will keep our liquidity uh, in a good position. And I am fairly sure that uh, the name will go up due to the fact that our uh, we still have uh, uh, other products which are firing now, like um, SME will be definitely turning around this year for growth. And we are also looking at home loan to grow this year. We are looking at uh, personal loan to be grown this year. We are looking at credit card to be grown this year. We are also planning to launch some of the retail products like commercial vehicle, construction equipment, uh, loan against shares. And we are also looking at, uh, we have started actually, already started the auto loan for open market. And these, all these businesses, uh, when we are, uh, uh, when we can uh, source these businesses uh, digitally and when we have a digital fulfillment, there is clearly scope for us to uh, charge reasonable uh, rates which are uh, not unfair to the customer, not unfair to the bank. So I believe that uh, given the fact that our unsecured is still about 3% of our book and there is a good home uh, um, uh, roof uh, type of space available, I think we will continuously grow all the businesses depending on where the quality is coming from with a very tight uh, focus on how we manage our liquidity, our ratios and our CD ratio. Uh, it is, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but uh, I, I feel that uh, since the rates have started moving up, every quarter this, is, this question has been asked and they've been continuously uh, communicating that we are managing it very, very uh, closely and it is in my radar and we hold at least three to two to three uh, alcos every month to have a very tight leash on this. We will continue to do that. I think it's, uh, it will take efforts, but then it's worth taking that effort to ensure that our NIMS are reaching the level which we are committing. So we are currently at 3.3. We would uh, we are looking at surpassing 3.5 for the coming year. Uh, understood. Uh, that's helpful. So the other question was on uh, our, uh, our our other income. Uh, even that has been fairly strong. Uh, uh, is there any uh, element of cross sell income into this, or what is leading to this healthy growth? Uh, other income, uh, of course, cross sell is definitely one of the uh, important components for us because we have, uh, as you know, that uh, banka. Now we are permitted to have more than uh, three banka partners also, so we are continuously uh, increasing our uh, insurance cross sell income, uh, especially in life. We have done very well, 
and we are also now we have started seeing good traction happening even in general insurance this is on one side second is uh, uh, you know that we have uh, uh, now the retail products have picked up we have a uh, uh, good scope to charge uh, fee uh, because some and sma also we have started charging a uh, processing fee etc which is with the with the disbursements going up in those products uh, certainly we can uh, we also can look and look at some of the cross sell opportunities available there and apart from uh, all this the other uh, income is like that uh, yeah the other income is the, te the technology related income i mean where we are talking about the atm and other uh, uh, commissions which we get which uh, that that also is one of the components in fact we have given a detailed break up in our uh, investor presentation you can probably have a look at them so uh, definitely insurance commission is one and uh, sale of investments is one credit card income and that's an again uh, something which has been clubbed into non interest income <laughs> uh that again as you know we have a very good tie up with uh, apl who is our uh, credit card uh, uh, co branding uh, uh, co branding partner and there we are seeing a good traction happening we have issued more than 2 lakh cards now and uh, this is only expected to grow further in the coming year so uh, since all these are recurring uh, income and recurring nature of income we believe that we'll be able to uh, uh, continue to sustain this one other component here is the amount recovered from um, return of accounts that we are combining under non interest income with the collection actually keep uh, doing quite well we have collected and upgraded 1800 crores this year and uh, we hope that for the coming year uh, this year also we are setting up a similar uh, target though uh, we are i'm giving a guidance of 1500 crores with page for the full year we expect the collections to continue to be doing well this year too so with all this we believe that it's a sustainable uh, income which is appear in non interest income perfect perfect and such so the last question from my end was on um, uh, the, the roa guidance so clearly we are kind of overshooting um uh, on our roa guidance right so uh, on on a uh, overall bank level uh, given that our fourth quarter exit roa is for about 1.26% um uh, should we assume that uh, if, uh, in fy24 itself we should be 1% plus roa um, um uh, earlier we had guided for touching that 1% plus roa number sometime in fy25 uh, but but do, do you really think that it's possible to kind of uh, exceed that uh, in fy24 itself yeah that that's the plan we uh, they in, in our original vision plan we said that we will reach 1% roa by fy24 march 24 uh, our endeavor will be to reach that and um, obviously uh, though we said that the entire uh, uh, goal post we are moving by one year but with respect to roa and roe we would want to reach that milestone uh, of course it's going to take a lot of efforts from our team but we will definitely endeavor to reach 1% roa by march 24 Oh, great thank you so much and wish you good luck sir thanks thank you so much thank you all thank you our next question comes from the line of poojan shah from congruence advisors please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, uh in this quarter we have seen that there is some branch expansion as well as we have seen that there is a big growth in the employee uh, numbers so are we restructuring the employee structuring and how is this going on because some of the branch expansion is there and as well as employees decreasing branch not getting that point yeah uh, no uh, branch expansion see frankly we have not gone about as a strategy to expand our branch network what we are trying to do is we are doing uh, uh, some kind of reorganizing some of the branches which are probably very close to each other especially in places like kerala and tamil nadu where we are predominantly present there are branches which are very close to each other and therefore the customer segment can very well be met with uh, the required uh, the needs of the customer can be very well met with one branch so wherever we are doing such consolidation the license gets released and the license we are using it for places where we are not represented today so to that extent we are seeing some 15 to 20 branches getting opened in uh, unrepresented areas like we have done it in uh, ahmedabad we have done it in calcutta we have done it in uh, chennai we have done it in few other places where uh where we are not represented today we are trying and opening branches so that it helps us to uh, uh be for our business so this is on the branch opening so as a strategy we haven't really embarked on uh spelling out that we would want to open 100 branches or 200 branches in a year that probably we will start doing once we completely get our digital action in place and see how the traction is happening in digital once we get a good understanding of that we will then see the need for having a brick and mortar office anywhere in the country and that probably when we will spell out how much uh, how many branches do we want to open 
with regard to employees uh, uh, see our uh, uh, probably the number which uh, which are seeing as uh, coming down in my view is also due to uh, some of the part time employees who are associated with the bank we count them uh, as employees and that after their part time gets over they move out of the uh, roles uh, to that extent this number can be little uh, volatile but uh, as a philosophy uh, we are continuously growing in all our businesses we are continuously recruiting people we are recruiting people at all levels and we are also recruiting people at uh, senior levels to fill up some of the uh, skill sets which we need for the kind of business which you want to embark on so um, this are this is broadly uh, how I, I would want to answer this uh, as such these numbers shouldn't really bother you because this is due to the fact that some of these part time employees moving out of the roles uh, okay sir and my second question would be on the uh, more than 100 crore book so as we have seen that we have grown almost double in the 100 crore odd book so and uh, we also know that we are building a triple a plus corporate book and about that so all uh, every franchise would be uh, will be uh, competing with this stuff so are we sacrificing some yield on that sum for the short term because we are yielding their uh, employees and all the other uh, uh, upselling and cross selling their employees with better yield so are we seeing any trajectory of uh, sacrificing on uh, yield on short term basis uh, which can be uh, skyly improvement on the upselling basis so are it i am i understanding the strategy is correct uh, you are understanding is partially correct to the fact that uh, you are what you are saying is actually factual that i well rated corporates uh, typically demand very fine rates to that extent uh, probably people might be thinking that we are there compromising on rates this i i don't think one should look at as a compromise one should look at as building the basic quality of a book should have triple a and double a therefore this is a need for any institution to build a strong fundamental therefore uh, i i would probably continue to be focusing on building the fundamentals which are well rated corporate should be forming part of our book in fact if you recall the history of the bank in way back in 2015 and before we have had uh, uh, concentration risk in terms of higher exposures to corporates but uh, some of them were on not probably very well rated corporates but now we are very consciously choosing the corporate who we want to deal with and we are ensuring that uh, we uh, lend money to those corporates which are very well rated and which have a track record of uh, you know performing well even in adverse situations that is number one number two when we are looking at corporates we are obviously as i said earlier in one of the answers that we are not just looking at the credit related income of the corporate we are looking at what are the benefits we can get and some of these relationships probably will start with a short term uh, exposure to corporates and some of them probably would be even outside of consortium because this is how corporates also sort of leverage or arbitrage their interest uh, opportunities therefore uh the moment you start engaging with the customer the customer gets to understand you and you understand the customer that's when we will be pitching in for being part of the consortium and i am happy to say that we have had some success in this area too uh, where we are now becoming part of the consortium and the other important thing is whenever such corporates want to raise money today we do get a uh, uh, opportunity to bid for those uh, deals which probably wasn't there earlier uh, because these corporates were not looking at uh, south indian bank as one of their banking partner so this is the aspect on uh, how we are looking at the corporate as a whole uh, but having said that i must share with you that corporate nims if i were to look at corporate banking nim alone this is one of the few businesses where we are actually seeing delta nim going up much better than delta of other businesses so uh, let me reiterate what i'm saying yes you are right that corporate names will be generally low so we were also at a low level when we were trying to get traction into these corporates so it was at about 1 and 1 and 1.8% to kind of name which we are experiencing about uh, 12 to 13 months back but very conscious effort has been made by the team in deepening their relationship with all these corporates and with the hardening of rates happening in the market in every quarter end the delta increase which is happening in the nim in the corporate book is really praiseworthy because if you look at the delta though other base could be high for a personal loan or base could be high for a sme but the delta which we can get from uh, in, from compared to those i think we have got a much better delta in corporate this is basically to say that our traction is our strategy is working quite well we are not compromising on yield at all we are getting into relationship with them and we are using that relationship to better our names across them i mean having said that 
corporate book as you as it stands today it's at about 95% of them are a rated in the book as we uh, probably see our uh, competency getting built in our teams we will start probably start looking at a triple b plus kind of corporates also going forward and we have not really touched too much of mid corporates that's one area where we will start focusing so the, all this would only help us to build the overall profitability coming out of the corporate business and okay, i think so that the quality of this book is impeccably clean we don't even have any account of in fsma2 or in npa in the newly built corporate book okay so any timeline when we start for triple b or that type of corporate because no, no, there is no timeline we are already sourcing it is okay. that we would look for a benchmark of quality if it meets up with our quality we onboard them if we don't if it doesn't we are not going to be sweating to go to triple b uh, and want to show some triple b composition but if it's good we will definitely lend them there's a uh, one last question uh, uh, we are heading a data science team so who is heading that team and how is this been evolving how many people have been engaged into this team yeah i, I don't think i would want to name a person who is heading it but just to suffice to say that the person who is heading has got more than 20 plus years of experience in data science uh, data analytics and he is uh, this is a fairly uh, large team large team in the sense that large for a bank of this size and we are engaged in um, liability analytics asset analytics collection analytics and in fact uh, we are also in some areas we are also engaging with some of the uh, outsourcing partners who have expertise in certain areas and we are making use of them also for the way of short term assignment so this is a this business is this uh, division is adding lot of value because using this we are actually getting lot more insights about the way we are uh, improving the quality of our liability customers we want to increase the quality of our asset customers what kind of uh, some of the predictive analytics which we are doing they to figure out who are the customers who are going to keep uh, funds with us who are the customers who are planning to take out funds who are they likely what is the next likely product for such customers how uh, collection uh, can be uh, enhanced collection efficiency can be enhanced by to predictive analytics on who would require a physical follow up who would require just a telephonic uh, follow up i mean all these are insights which we are continuously getting from this team doing extensive analytics i think we will continue to uh, we are still i would say uh, 40% of where i would want this division to be we have started now uh, using lot of developing lot of vintage cows to do the reviews of various portfolio as it becomes a full fledged division i'm sure all our reviews and uh, all our uh, uh, strategies for growing business will be born out from the insights which we'll get from the data analytics team okay thank you so much sir thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of shrijan sena from future generally life insurance please go ahead yeah yes yeah, so i have three quick questions one is on the tax rate uh, this quarter and in fact this year itself uh, tax rate has been on the higher side for most of the quarters what explains that uh see we are continuing to we are not gone in for uh, uh, the lower corporate tax so we uh, uh, as i see um, the effective tax rate for us for this year was 30% uh, which includes mat rate of 16% uh, so basically we still have some of our uh, uh, old mat credits available and we are continuously making uh, uh, i mean wherever we need to uh, proceed on appeal to recover those we are continuing continue to take the efforts and you must have seen some of the quarters where we have got some uh, positive coming out of that so our endeavor is to um, exhaust that before we switch over to the alternate uh, tax regime and fy24 we expect our effective tax rate to be closer to th- maybe 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 fy25 maybe not not in this year Okay. So my second question is on uh, other income. Was there any one lumpy account in, uh, I mean, in terms of recoveries from the return of account in the other income? And how would they, would, would the quantum be? Uh, see, lumpy account meaning, uh, see, if you are talking about uh, amount return of since recover, which is, uh, which is what probably you are referring to, lumpy. See, we must remember that uh, uh, when uh, we must remember that we still carry a. gnp of uh, close to 3000 uh, uh, 3400 500 crores plus kind of gnp or gnp is still at about 5.2% so there are uh, accounts big accounts which are still lying there and where there are constant efforts being put in and so you know that it's uh, it's all based on how uh, soon the legal process has happened so while we are not counting on any of them to rectify uh, in our uh, estimation of uh, our uh, profitability or uh, profits or any of those 
our uh, if it happens yes we uh, it's a good uh, sign for us good thing for us because that would be a additional uh, thing which probably uh, would come as a surprise to uh, to the uh, our stakeholders so my some quarters in some quarters you get the benefit some quarters you may not get the benefit so we are not really counting on them to really uh, project our uh, profitability no so my question was more with respect to q4 have we seen any large recovery uh, taking place in yeah yeah we, we had a real recovery from syntex that was one of the large accounts and how big would that be we got we had recovered about 1000 one for 140 120 128 120 crores or something like that okay, okay fair enough so my third question is on uh, on your capital efficacy uh, given the fact that you have declared a dividend this year uh is that a signal that uh, you're not likely to hit the markets in fy24 and you are adequately capitalized no uh, let me put it this way 17.25% yes we are very happy about the capital adequacy being 17.25 and, and tier 1 at about 14% plus but having said that uh, uh, as you know capital is something which we need to be constantly looking at even the opportunity which can come in the market though we are articulating that we would want to grow our asset book by uh, 12% but if there is an opportunity coming which you want to tap probably we would go uh, for uh, growing much more than what we are telling in which case we might need to look for uh, capital uh, uh, raising op- uh, opportunity also but having said that uh, are we in a dire need to raise capital immediately the answer is no but uh, will we be looking at raising capital very carefully the answer is yes in the quarter we will definitely look at based on the internal approach which gets generated in the quarter we will uh, our capital inflation committee with the subcommittee of the board will convene and we will discuss about how uh, we are looking at the uh, quarters going forward and what kind of uh, things which we are uh, looking at in terms of uh, uh, capital adequacy movement and then we will decide on quantum route and uh, what kind of uh, issue we want to have having said that there are couple of things which i also want to um, from which i had covered in my earlier call also there are some tier 2 bonds etc which we still carry and whenever uh, we feel that there is a uh, requirement to uh, pay them off that again something which we would be contemplating as we move forward and in which case probably we might need to uh, because today the dependence on tier 2 definitely has come down our uh, tier 1 is still uh, at a sufficient 14% plus and the overall capital adequacy of 17.25% so as the dependence on tier 2 comes down we will also probably want to uh, pay back whichever can be paid back by the bank that call also we will take as we go for go along okay and so finally uh, where are we in terms of your succession planning how soon are you likely to hear the name of the of your successor sorry I, i didn't understand i mean where are we in terms of your succession planning okay. that's okay okay yeah uh, 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 i would like my chairman to answer this question because he is also with me let me let him you know that uh, uh, the uh, the board has appointed a search committee immediately after hearing from release uh, intention not to continue beyond uh, september 2023 uh the the search committee has already uh looked at the uh, profile of a few candidates and uh, we are in the process of narrowing down to a few and moving to the next direction so once we finalize the successor uh what we are planning is to move to the reserve bank of india four months in a four months ahead of the vacancy incoming vacancy uh for the approval that is a regulatory requirement we are also concurrently trying to have the rt approval earlier and uh, having the chief uh, 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 new md and ceo to be concurrently running with mr murli a few one or two months so that the new uh, uh, new government will have a greater understanding of the bank the financials the uh, the policies the people and the processes and the technology everything so that the uh, takeover of the new incumbent on 1st of october 2023 seamless that is what we we did with the minister murli ramakrishnan as well in the past okay so so most likely we are going to see an internal candidate or uh, yeah hello anything more you want to know Yeah, I'm saying most likely it is going to be an internal candidate or an external candidate. Uh, we are not agnostic to internal or external. We want the best man to be on the uh, hem of the uh, MS, MD, and CEO. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sheel Shah from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, on the team side, uh, are we expecting any exits or additions at top management? No. We have, we have not had any way uh, exits in top management uh, even in the past. Uh, so we don't expect any opinion. All our senior executives today are uh, banking veterans with more than 20 years of, uh, 20 years plus six years of experience. I have missed, but uh, what's up? Credit cost guidance, credit cost for FI24. Credit cost, sir. Credit cost for FI24. We are the, uh, uh, we are, uh, we are, uh, we expect it around two to two. Uh, my slippage is going to be thousand five hundred crores per year, and I'm expecting my credit cost to be uh, somewhere around two percent. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Pallavi Deshpande with Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. I just wanted to understand uh, what would be the size of the written off book, um, you know, because we're having these recoveries. So, what's the total size of the written off book? Size of the written off book. I, I think we may not have the ready data with us. We'll probably get, uh, get back to you on that. Currently, okay. we don't have. We will get back yeah. to you. And so you mentioned earlier about on the digital plan, plan right? So once you have that um, whole uh, architecture yes. in place, you can be more aggressive on the loans. Uh, so why, when do we expect to have this, you know, digital piece of ours fully in place? Yeah, see, uh, let me first rephrase your question. We don't want to be aggressive in anything. We want to be uh, sensible. Even if you are doing digital, we'll be doing a sensible business because never do we want to compromise on quality. That is one. Second, uh, see, it's not that uh, uh, we are going to start by announcing a particular date. Actually, actually the, uh, if you look at the uh, infrastructure needed for digital business, first is the platform. So we already have a detailed platform, which is now commissioned now. Now we are we have started actually onboarding home loan lab cases and uh, PL uh, using the lab uh, platform. Um, so now this has been rolled out in uh, four zones now, uh, four regions now. Probably we will then now scale it up to the entire country. And uh, with that, what we expect to see is the uh, uh, turnaround time will become uh, faster. And we also feel that uh, the uh, the uh, because of. Uh, our um, uh, lead sourcing also linked to the uh, platform. We'll be able to source digital, uh, we can probably source uh, digitally across the country for any of these products. So uh, that is, that's a way, that's the infrastructure which is needed for that, which is well in place now. As far as SME is concerned, we've already gone in for a platform and that platform is likely to be commissioned uh, by, uh, likely to be commissioned by uh, for first quarter end or maybe early second quarter and uh, the advantage is that for both uh, these uh, both for home loan personal loan as well as for SME our uh, BRE is already available our credit model is already available so it's just a question of hooking the credit, mo credit model into the platform and we can seamlessly do the uh, transaction so so SME uh, we will start completely digital, doing digital fulfillment, maybe starting from second quarter onwards, once uh, it gets commissioned. Obviously, once it gets commissioned, we'll probably roll out uh, in few regions to start with, understand how it's behaving, and then we'll roll it out for the country. So this is how uh, we have plans towards digital. So when I talked about um, brick and mortar, that's when I said about digital that we would want to probably onboard some of these products to see how uh, the traction is happening. And we'll also want to uh, increase the product food which we can do through the digital, especially nucleus. We have we can uh, start to use doing our lab uh, last business also through digital. We'll also want to do auto finance business for which we need a credit model to be built in place. We have just initiated that. Once that comes into place, we will probably start offering even auto through digital platform. So this doesn't have anything to do with fintech, right? Uh, any partnerships with fintechs also? Uh... Uh, this would be the, uh, our own so this the, these, these platforms you have bought it for uh, for our own thing. It's not a tie up with anybody as of now. Uh, but you will be, of course, you have fintechs for uh, like credit card relationship with a fintech, where the entire uh, fulfillment happens digitally, and it is happening digitally uh, because we have a tie up with FTN. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Jay with ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, good evening, um, good afternoon, sir, and uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, sir, I was just referring to your guidance on credit cost. Um, so I was just wondering that, uh, you know, how does this tie up with your ambition of 1% ROA? Um, this year we have credit cost uh, in absolute terms provisions at around uh, 400 crores. Right? And next year you are saying that 2% kind of a credit cost is possible. Um, then how would you achieve the 1% uh, ROA ambition? See, uh, I, I'll tell you, uh, this year, if you look at my provisioning cost, it's about 627 crores for this full year. Okay. Uh, and this is based purely on loan loss provisioning. Then we have uh, some uh, com uh, provisioning right back from the restructured and FATL book. And then there is a, uh, so added with both added together, we are at about 503 crores. Then there is a provision for SR, which we did last time as a one-off provisioning, which we did, which was 312 crores. Overall SR, towards SR, we provide for 374 crores. So cumulatively, we have provided in for FI 2023, 877 crores. So this 877 crores, on a base of 72,092, works out to credit cost of 1.22% for FI 2023. If you look at a similar breakup for this year, our 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 endeavor is to, as against 877, which I talked about, I will probably try to restrict it to 650. That's my that's my plan. Probably uh, I'll have positive surprise there, but uh, probably the outer limit I would want to keep it at 650. So when we are trying to grow the book to 80,500 crores, uh, this is the uh, stated asset growth which we want to have. Probably we are looking at a credit cost of 0.75 percent kind of level. Uh, for the coming year. This is this is based on the provisioning. Uh, so, ROA, uh, the way, way I go about is, we will, uh, we, you, we have seen our incremental ROA for the Q4 was well number one. And with the fact that the new products which we are going to add, uh, which we are going to be sort of growing, not new products, sorry, the businesses which will be growing, we are going to see uh, decent growth coming in all these products which are generally high yielding products. Like if you look at uh, PL, we can grow, we have room for growth, we have credit card, there is clear room for growth. And uh, we are uh, talking about a couple of uh, credit card allied uh, products which we can offer in credit card itself. Uh, then we are looking at uh, growing gold, we are looking at uh, uh, ramping up our auto loan and home loan. Obviously we were going very slow on mortgages, but now uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, comfort now we can start looking at growing our mortgage business. See, in all these businesses, uh, I'm sure you know that NIMS in this business are upwards of 7 to 8 percent. These are the NIMS available. Deliberately, we were not really growing them much in the past because I wanted to get the credit equation right. I wanted to improve our PCR. I wanted to bring down the net NPA. Now, with a bit of uh, room available, we can certainly uh, grow these businesses again without forgetting uh, quality as an underlying uh, credit course. Underlying parameter. So, uh, right. Sorry, uh, probably there, there, there is a little bit of uh, uh, maybe a bit of correction in uh, my number. Credit cost, I said 2%. Basically, it will be probably anywhere between 1 to 1.25%. 1.25%, you can take it as a number. Right. So, credit cost is unchanged and then margin should hopefully rise. And sir, on your, on your, the margin rise is predicated on your higher growth in the, you know, higher yielding uh, portfolio, which you will launch or you will accelerate in the, the run rate. But these products are also high um, touch cost intensive, right? Credit card, PL, and you will also have to put in some investment uh, as you ramp up these businesses. So, uh, in, in, in your OPEX growth, uh, how do you see the OPEX growth on, uh, for FI24. See, credit, credit card, as you know, we have a, a, a partnership with a co-branding partner. Therefore, uh, today, the involve, uh, the, our, our relationship, our agreement with them is basically on two counts. One is policy which we prescribe and second one is the uh, funds which we provide to them. Uh, so, with respect to every other investment, they have already done those investments and we have already started issuing cards and we are currently at about 2 lakh plus cards. Uh, even with a very conservative estimate, we expect uh, the next year, even if it is as good as this year, we would expect the cards to be another 1.5 lakh cards to be issued in the coming year. 
So uh, there, if you look at it, uh, uh, the uh, based on the agreement which we have with them, we expect the ROE coming out of this product to be easily in in in, in terms of uh, easily in the in the, in the tune of three percent kind of uh, ROE. Uh, whereas for all of the products, see, frankly, already we have a digital complete digital fulfillment in PL, and we have already gone in for a, a platform for retail. We have already gone in for a platform for SME. So in any of these products wanting to do, we already have invested. So therefore, in my view, the delta which we would come, which would come for ramping up the growth of these businesses, will have to come from the manpower cost probably, which may have to a bit increase because some of these businesses require a lot of outsourcing to be done. So DST cost, DMA cost will be there. Some of them will involve the payout, which might we might have to do to the uh, dealership or the uh, builders uh, 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 arrangement. Those those could be the marginal cost which can come, but anyway, all this will be factored in our pricing. So I don't really believe that we need to really go and set up something to really ramp up these businesses. We are already having the basic, uh, I mean, fairly good infrastructure in place. It's just a question of accelerating that. Right. No, but sir, I was asking. We have seen this. You know, as you said that you will need to have sourcing, higher sourcing costs, DSA, and uh, all these things. So. Uh, what I was wanted to know is uh, what could be the OPEX growth that we are building in because it could be a very um, uh, OPEX intensive business. At least these are these are new businesses. See, we will have to take it as it comes. Let me uh, the way we go about uh, any of these businesses. Basically, we draw a business plan. We clearly draw out the expenses. We clearly draw out the uh, uh, every line item. And the, and also we look at ROE coming out of that, and so all these businesses, each of these businesses serve a certain purpose. So we will we will, I mean, like the way we are see the the, the advantage is that when we have corrected many of these businesses which had lots of corrections to be done, then we can get them right. I'm sure when we are launching, we can get those equations right. And this business is not something which we are going to be doing for the first time. We understand this business very well, and we will put in place whatever is needed to be done. So I don't think we need to unduly worry about you know phenomenal increase in ops cost. If it's if it's there, we we'll have to take correction and we we'll have to uh, uh, suitably tweak our strategy to ensure that uh, you know because these businesses serve certain purpose. See, when you are looking at growing your personal loan, there are lot lot of new to bank customers who might come in. Then there's a cross flow opportunity. When you are looking at credit card, there are allied credit card products uh, which we can offer. Um, PLCC and uh, uh, those kind of products which we can offer, and again we can use these new to bank customers for profiling other products. So there are multiple benefits coming out of uh, these business growth of been growing these businesses. So we will definitely look at uh, all those benefits also when we are factoring the ROE coming out of this business and the and the uh, ops cost which will be incurred for this business. Sure, sir. And uh, there was a uh, so there was an observation from last year annual report FY22 uh, that you know for the FY22 we had not granted any ESOPs to the um, management uh, risk taker and control function staff at right, which uh, we need to value on the fair value. So I wanted to check sir for FY23 um, it, 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 what is the status? Have we given ESOPs to uh, let's say the 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 manage, senior management? Because there was no, no uh, there was no ESOP to FI22, so I just wanted to check what is the status for FI23. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So we are uh, what we have decided this year is that uh, the uh, variable which we'll be paying for, uh, which we have paid actually for all the employees, uh, for those employees who are uh, a certain uh, band of salaries and above, we have given them 90% of the variable pay in, in in the form of cash and 10% of the variable pay we are giving in the form of ESOPs. Uh, this is what we have done. And uh, 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 so, uh, so this year probably you will see a change in the way we come out of uh, give our annual. Uh, you know, we'll, what we'll be writing in our annual report because there is a plan to issue ESOPs to the entire workforce, probably barring those who are uh, sub staff and uh, those kind of employees. Right. And last data and so keeping question. Sir. Currently drawing very low salary levels. I mean, are relatively at a low salary levels. For them, it doesn't make sense to give them as ESOP. They probably will be giving them as uh, we have already given them as a cash, whatever is the incentive. Right. And last data keeping question, sir. If you have the recovery and write off number for uh, fourth quarter separately, uh, and yeah, 
in the movement of NPA, how much has been the write off for fourth yeah. quarter and uh, full year? Yeah. I can, I can. Just, give me a minute. Just... See, uh, for Q4, Q4 we had a slippage of 343 crores, which is which is something I'm sure you would have uh, noted it down. And our GNP recovery in fourth quarter is 451 crores. This just to give you for the previous quarters, it was 234 crores in Q1 recovery I'm talking about. 234 crores in Q1, 291 crores in Q2, 319 crores in Q3, and 451 crores in Q4. Yeah, right this does not include the recovery from TW, right? So this this right off, right off, right off, right off. Just to give you right off numbers: 68 crores in Q1, 22 crores in Q2, 25 crores in Q3, and 43 crores in Q4. Sure. So we started the year with a GNP of 3648 which became 3799 at the end of Q1, which dropped to 3856 end of Q2, then, uh, sorry, increased, and then it was 3844, uh, almost at the same level in Q3. We are currently closing at 3708. This 3708 is 5.14% of my book. This we want to bring it down to 4.5% by next year. Okay. And any guidance on the net NP, sir? I mean, we are slightly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, net NP, we are currently at 1.86. Uh, we are, uh, we want to bring it below one, one and a half. So, sir, it looks like that we are estimating the recovery will further, will keep outpacing the slippages for 24 as well, right? Because we are saying that yeah. net NPA will also decline by 100 basis points without, with the same commensurate credit cost. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's what we are hoping, yes. Sure. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Rakesh Kumar with BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you, sir. So, sir, first question is basically on the risk rate density. Like, there has been quite a lot of uh, fall that we have seen on a consistent basis. So, like, you know, apart from the rise in the PCR and, you know, change in loan composition, uh, you know, in favor of gold on book, what else is helping, you know, risk rate density number to come down? See, I would say that uh, 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 risk rate density has come down prominently because we have chosen quality as the underlying factor across all businesses. So, when you are actually churning your portfolio with the high quality uh, assets, uh, clearly, your uh, uh, risk rate risk density will keep coming down. So this was uh, in 2017-18. I have the figures for last six years. 2017-18 was 58.15. Now that has come down to 42.92. So uh, this has happened because of uh, uh, clearly because of the churning of the portfolio with the better rated, better quality of the portfolio across all segments. See, uh, I, I'm sure you must have noted down that in our 40,000 crores of new book addition, we are talking about GNP of only 0.09% and even SMA2 of only 0.12%. So, clearly the quality of the book is uh, uh, fairly good and uh, uh, hopefully that will sustain. And uh, therefore, with a very limited capital increase of only 240 crores, which we did in March uh, 21 quarter, we are able to bring down the overall uh, uh, risk density to 42.92 percent. Sir, but this is this number is certainly best in the industry or among the best in the industry. So on the contrary, you know, like uh, we have increased our you know uh, PL and credit card composition uh, in the last one year, and then we have seen you know increasing the credit yield also by around 130 bips from June uh, 22 to. March 23. So basically, you know, there is a, there has been a reduction in the risk weight density, and uh, we are increasing, you know, some bit increase in the, you know, uh, gold loan book also and the PL credit card book also. So just wanted to understand that rise in the yield, credit yield, has it come, you know, how much has it come from the interest rate cycle and from the, you know, the measures. Uh, what we have taken in terms of changing the credit composition and uh, you know rise in the PCR. So if you can bifurcate, you know the impact of these things on the credit yield. So just to understand that when the interest rate you know plateau, 
so you know where the yield can you know go to see uh, first let me start by saying that um, uh, when when the bank was uh, clearly going through a rate reduction cycle you must have seen the bank getting hit with a very low nim so when the interest rates are rising your ability to pass on the rates to your customers clearly depends on uh, it's not that it's going to be automatic it's going to be dependent on lot of hard work to be done by engaging with the customer to pass on the increase interest rates so to that extent you uh, we have we have done that across all product segments and you are right that with your composition with your growth coming uh, let's say from credit card or pl etc where generally the uh, cost i mean that uh, the uh, the risk uh, riskiness of the business is on the higher side but if you look at the quantum of the growth which will be coming from these businesses still they are very low compared to the kind of growth which you would be seeing uh, probably in other uh, bulky product like corporate or sme so to that extent like for example in the pl which we started almost from a fairly low base uh, we are now after almost 2 years of 2 and 1/2 years of running it we are currently at about 1800 crores but this 1800 crores of book addition uh, you might see that happening in a corporate book within 2 months up and down both can happen so so when uh, the, the the approach is that as you keep building your sustainable retail businesses again factoring quality into account you will continue to ensure that you are you are pricing it correctly your riskiness is taken care and your nims are on the rise and you are able to obviously make use of the customer base for cross sell and other purposes corporate and products like home loan serve us in bringing lot of stability to the overall asset base and that helps you to probably manage some of the ratios which are obviously dependent on the overall book so um, If you if you were to ask me uh, whether the, I mean if you really need to need to break your break up your yield into how much is coming from uh, uh, yield uh, rate increase, I can tell you that rate increase doesn't automatically guarantee that your yield will increase. It all depends on how well you deal with the customer. So there are banks which would have passed on one percent increase. There are banks which have done two percent increase in rate. There are banks which may not have done even a half percent increase in their uh, overall yield. So it depends also on the composition of the book which you have. There are banks which are focusing on, let's say, microfinance or uh, consumer durable kind of product, where two percent, three percent here and there doesn't make a difference at all. That's the reason why you are finding them going and raising liabilities at seven point nine percent, eight percent in the market because their ability to pass on such rates are quite easy when they are dealing with customers who are willing to pay twenty three, twenty five, twenty six percent. Whereas uh, our product composition, our product suit is even today are uh, directed towards. good quality customer they probably are probably playing more in the prime segment that there you need to be carefully choosing your uh, interest rate increase also and you need to suitably alter your product mix so that you know why you are building certain product for and how does it help in your portfolio mix got it sir uh, so just last question uh, if you can uh, help us you know understand what is happening in the industry overall uh, you know pan india basis and for the for our bank in terms of low cost nri deposit and total nri deposit so i know that there is a difficult time industry numbers are not showing growth but uh, just to understand uh, what you feel about it yeah see uh, you are right when uh, when uh, nra uh, nra business if you were to look at there are three components in nra business one is we are talking about the deposits uh, the other one is uh, uh, low cost deposit which is basically casa where you are, you are open your nra accounts with us uh, there there are nro accounts keeping balances and third one is the remittance business so as far as we are what we are actually witnessing is that uh, given the overall uh, increase in the repo rate announced by regulators we saw the re- deposit rates across the board getting increased and there are banks which have also increased their nra deposit rates fairly uh, aggressively to that extent we have seen that many of the nra customers who are also holding fairly large chunks of money have shifted uh, from uh, a bank a to bank b by looking at the interest rates which are offered by uh the banks which are currently giving a uh, higher rates whereas banks like us i mean these banks probably which are increasing interest rates also probably have a good foreign currency portfolio in their portfolio for example some of them have got branches some of them have got uh or repo offices 
across the world and therefore there is enough scope for them to uh, do uh, ecb funding or do foreign currency funding and uh, given the fact that our uh, our uh, offshore uh, branch is growing very well in the country some of these banks who got branches over there they are able to park those uh, businesses where they can do foreign currency lending and to that extent they have the leverage to charge high rates uh, uh, i mean charge give give high rates for deposits whereas for bank like ours which has got only a rep office in dubai and where we are actually using uh, this foreign currency funding basically to look at very limited opportunities which our customers might ask in foreign currency lending basically to arbitrage the rate opportunity rate advantage which they might get or else we need to uh, use them for our rupee lending uh, in which case it's dependent on our swap cost and other things so we constantly uh, so what we are seeing as a trend is many of them are moving their money from kasa into deposit this is one trend which we saw Uh, and the other thing which we saw is lot of remittances though remittances overall have gone up uh, thanks to the depreciation in rupee the conversion today for uh, any earner in foreign currency will give you more rupee on hand we have find that uh, remittances have uh, grown uh, considerably and we have also seen good increase in our own remittance growth but earlier this remittance money which used to come used to stay in the account for a longer period therefore your kasa it was helping us to have a very low cost kasa but now we are finding that the alternate avenues available for money even for for example in rupee deposit rates in india or the market opportunities capital market opportunities etc these monies are getting diverted into those things so as a trend what we are seeing one remittance is increasing and we are also seeing that increase for us two money is moving from deposits into i uh, sorry money is moving from a low uh, uh, interest rate providers to high interest rate providers and money is moving from uh, 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 money is moving from uh, kasa into other investment opportunities so as far as we are concerned we are actually doing a slight tweak in our strategy earlier we were looking at lot of for want of better word i would say low quality customers we were looking at focusing on numbers in the past so we had lots of low quality customers who were keeping fairly low balances with us etc now as a conscious strategy we are now switching our uh, profile of uh, nra customers also into people who can hold uh, who are well uh, net worth nra customers to that extent probably we might start seeing our um, uh, customer uh, overall uh, uh, amount maintained by the customer in their accounts as well as the deposits they keep holding with us probably you will will start seeing some traction happening there and we have also started seeing that our uh, remittance business is which is a good business for us we have now started having more tie-ups with many of the exchange houses in middle east and we uh, in our nra customer base today we have 80% of our customers are in middle east and 20% are in the rest of the world and that ratio continues to hold and we are continuing to see that uh, with more and more tie-up happening not only in uh, middle east but also in other countries in gulf as well as in other parts of the world like we have tied up with uh, uh, the agency uh, some uh, uh, A relationship in canada some somebody in uk we have started uh, having types with uh, those uh, entities also which hopefully will get us more remittances coming to so we overall nra business it's continuing to be a very key uh, contributor to us both in terms of our deposit as well as in terms of our low cost kasa and it's also giving now free income and it's also giving uh, good remittances now so with all that uh, we believe that it's continuing to play a very important role in our overall liability strategy okay just one a small thing sir clarification so higher deposit rate or uh, you know higher interest rate overall in the other countries from where we source the remittances is that also the reason which is uh, which is an obstacle for the remittances here in india no people see there are there are two three different types of uh, nras one is nras who have gone there just to do work and their family is back in india these customers typically will keep sending money back because their family needs money in india and their kids must be studying in india so these are the people who would be banking on remittance and they will always be looking at uh, rupee depreciation and want to take advantage of the low i mean higher rupee which they get for for every foreign currency they earn this is one set of customers second set of customers are people who are high net worth individuals who are either running business or Uh, run, uh working for a large big corporates in the middle east or any other place their earnings will be substantial 
they will probably look for opportunities to deploy their funds in making more money so they will be constantly looking at how well the capital market is doing uh, in india or elsewhere so today given the opportunity given uh, uh, the development they can pretty much invest anywhere so these are the people who will probably deploy some amount for indian capital market while they deploy substantial funds for wherever they can earn more earn more money so with the interest rate gently hardening in all other countries with inflation being the highest ever in those countries there will always obviously opportunities for such people to deploy more and more money in markets where they can earn higher returns the third set of people are people who have no linkages to india at all though they are pios and um, uh, indian but they may not have any linkage to india such customers probably uh, uh, large banks will be tapping them because these banks can still raise money in foreign currency and they hold foreign currency deposits in their branches uh, therefore uh, such customers will opt those banks which are internationally well present uh, i used to work for icic and we had a uh, icic used to have substantial nra uh, deposit base uh, in uh, in the these countries and uh, the reason and they and we Uh, and this can this uh, bank can also deploy these funds because in many of the geographies they are permitted to do dollar funding so they can raise money in dollar and deploy money in dollar whereas uh, sib we don't do any lending outside of india because we have only a repo office there so our raising foreign currency is primarily for the purpose of swapping them into rupee and we can provide uh, you know reasonably a competitive cost to some of the high net high end corporates who probably wants to make use of this uh, swap cost to reduce their overall cost of borrowing understood sir many many thanks sir for a elaborate uh, response many thanks thank you thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of arjun bhatia from bowhead investment advisors please go ahead thank you sir for this opportunity i had couple of questions firstly a re clarification for everyone's benefit you know we mentioned about marginal decline in in pa in 2024 and sma of your new book is very low at the same time you are pointing out to 1.2% credit cost or a, or in an absolute terms about a 1000 crore credit cost since you shared three different numbers of the call and this numbers prima facie looks very high to me you know uh, based on whatever you said you know can you please reconfirm your team what is this number for everyone's benefit No, I, I didn't say thousand crores as my credit cost. I said one point two percent on eighty five thousand seven fifty seven fifty crores is is what I said. So seven fifty crores. Just just to reiterate, I I talked about I gave you the breakup of uh, what it was in uh, for this year, and I also said what we are anticipating in the coming year. Understood. So seven fifty crores is the final number. So now I have separate question. This was for everyone's benefit. you know uh, my uh, two questions are do you expect any segment to grow much faster out of agri retail sme or corporate or broadly more or less there will be nine and in terms of total growth can this 12% guidance you're giving also be 15% you know eventually see we uh, uh, see one is of course to grow uh, uh, book across all segments basically to balance out your portfolio but obviously grow, growth in all these businesses will have to come depending on the opportunity which we get if you are finding that opportunities in sme uh, uh, is going to be better or if opportunities going to be in corporate is going to be better clearly will be uh, so our criteria is basically quality which there definitely we will acquire more and more customers for growth we in our planned growth of uh, let's say 12 13% for the coming year frankly the mix of how we will grow this though we have a uh, target uh, meant for each of these businesses but we will keep uh, realigning our plan depending on how we see our overall uh, growth in each of these business lines are happening and how it is impacting our overall nim and uh, uh, profitability so that's how i would put it clearly the focus will be to grow retail more because we want to uh, uh, increase our uh, uh, base of uh, portfolio which will be uh, stabilizing and also we want to uh, uh, ensure that uh, uh, we our corporate uh, i mean corporate or sme uh, is something which we will continue to have traction not only for earning great income but also for other cross sell opportunities which can come so uh, that that's the uh, broad uh, reply i want to give so the second question is that you know uh, you know in terms of you know uh, capital raise plans is my understanding correct based on whatever you said you know in last one hour 
that there's no plan to immediately raise capital let's say next 3 months before q1 results and and not at this price you know so uh, you know there's no urgency to raise capital in next 3 months and at such current low price and you know uh, you didn't answer my previous question you know can this 12% also inch up to 15% so you know uh, is it a range or you know you think 12% will be a fairly aggressive target and you know 15 will be too tough a ask no see uh, uh, let me let me tell you the philosophy if i say 20 and if i do 15 you guys will be very unhappy if i say 12 and if i do 15 will be very happy right this is the general uh, philosophy so i'm saying obviously all of us want to grow much more than what we are wanting to say but at the same time i don't want either the team to come under pressure that they compromise on quality at the same time i don't want them to uh, be laid back and say okay which only 12 percent so let me do what i need to do so how we manage internally our teams clearly will decide on how much we are committing basic suffice to say that GDP growth, if it's going to be six percent, nobody today also knows how much the GDP growth is going to be. It's anywhere from seven percent we started with, then six and a half. Now we are talking about six. So the idea is to grow at least two times the GDP growth is what I have in mind. This is how I have seen in my long career that if you are chasing a growth which is two times your GDP growth, you can reasonably be uh, balanced in your approach to sourcing good quality deals in whatever businesses you do. So I am giving a guidance of. Uh, lower double digits primarily to ensure that our underlying uh, uh, fundamental block is quality we don't want that to be compromised at all so i don't want any of you to factor 15% and 20% and keep uh, uh, working out these numbers because if i one way to chase those numbers probably banks like us probably might end up not doing not having good quality book with us so we would rather uh, chase good quality deals or growth at the same time growth is needed for us to sustain the profitability therefore i am committing that it's uh, uh, it will be lower to double digit growth therefore 12% is something which reasonably one can take as a growth expectation uh, the second portion was on the capital raise you know which uh, capital on. raise the capital raise as i said earlier uh, we would need to factor three four things when we are planning to raise capital one is of course the the uh, need for uh, liquidity the need for given the growth plans which we have and the uh, uh, the the things which i talked about in terms of tier 2 commitments which uh, which today our dependence on tier 2 is anyway coming down therefore we need to see how we can uh, factor them in our plans to pay them off that's another factor which will come in third of course is the uh, the factor which people normally talk about in terms of dilution whether by issuing uh, equity will we be diluting too much uh this was one of the concerns which was raised even when i was raising my first set of equity where it was needed very badly by the bank so we raised 240 crores i could at that point in time that time also there were questions around dilution but clearly the bank's requirement was far more than the dilution which we talked about but now obviously we need to factor dilution also in the account fourth thing is how well the market is conducive for raising capital and what is the route and how receptive uh, the investors would be whether you want to go for uh, equity issue or uh, uh, i mean rights issue or uh, uh, you know uh, that also we will decide based on how well the market is uh, uh, market traction is happening uh, so we will, we will, we will, as we go along we will take these decisions uh, after we look at how much of the internal accruals is accruing to the bank's capital Well, my question was: Is anything planned in next two three months in the immediate, very near term at current price? If it is planned, I would have definitely articulated to you now. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Salim Gangadharan, Chairman, for closing comments. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to all of you, and uh, I was really impressed by the in- insight view and uh, deeper questioning questions uh, raised by all of you, and it has given tremendous insight to me personally. And uh, from our board perspective, I will speak about about because the earlier numbers were rolled out by Mr. Murli Damakrishnan, MD and CEO. and uh, he clarified on many of the points so i am not touching upon the finances of the bank so what what is demonstrated from the outcome of our transformation process and the business strategy over the last two and a half years 
is clearly demonstrated in the numbers. You know, what uh, the board wanted is, what board, including the MD and CEO, was aspiring for a significant strengthening of the financials and a transformation process. So the numbers have clearly demonstrated that the objectives and the strategy of the board and the senior management and the bank has been accomplished. That is the first observation. Now the, the question comes is what is our future strategy? So the board is convinced uh, that the present strategy is paying off well and uh, which has shown uh, clearly demonstrable qualitative parameters and improvements in the finances as well as the growth numbers. So we wanted to pursue the same strategy going forward, even after change of the uh, in MD's position. So there is no change at all. You know, in fact, I wanted to add you one point when we at the search committee is evaluating the uh, new candidates, one of the, we have constructed a capacity grade. You know, one of the key parameters we are using to assess the capacity and the quality of the person to come in is, one of the parameters I'll read out, uh, that he, the candidate should have convinced that the transformation journey over the past two and a half years is right is the right path towards sustaining growth and profitability. So this is a very significant factor. We are assessing the quality of the person to come in. So there will not be any change in the strategy or the uh, uh, systems and process we are pursuing. We continue to pursue because it is paid off well. So uh, uh, so the search committee is deep into the process. We have already evaluated several number of uh, number of candidates, and uh, we are now moving to the second round of the evaluation. And once it is finalized, so we will be moving to the Reserve Bank of India well on time. That is the fourth uh, fourth year. So uh, this is what I thought I will uh, uh, share with you. And um, uh, uh, capital raise, uh, we are closely watching the scenario, and uh, give as uh, MD has clarified to you that uh, 17.25 uh, capital as of March 23 is sufficient enough in the short run. But uh, given the dynamics of the risk profile of the assets we are booking it over the over the months, we are closely watching the risk, uh, risk metrics. And uh, if necessary, we will be going to the market with capital. So there is an open mind on capital raise. So thank you once again for joining this uh, call and in raising very, very incisive and deep questions to uh, the MDMC. Yes, yeah. then uh, one more issue we uh, wanted to clarify, make it abundantly clear to all of you. Murli, uh, Mr. Murli Ramakrishnan has personally opted not to extend his term beyond September 20 out of his personal pressing personal reasons, and that uh, and the board is very much ha would have been very much happy to give him another term without any discussions. But he has decided to uh, leave on his own accord and on personal grounds. So. Board was extremely happy with the good work Mr. Murli has done for the past two and a half years. That he clearly helped the board and the bank in achieving a quick turnaround. You know, the, the matter of a turnaround of two and a half years is a significant achievement for the bank, and we really appreciate his efforts. Put in. He and his team put to the uh, foot for the quick turnaround of this organization. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. On behalf of Incred Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.